We go to Sliminovac Pizza. That's one of the most beautiful hikes in Slovenia. This is all my playground. And from there is one of the best views in Julian Alps. A lot of places to stop to take the photos. So what we will cover? Why Slovenia? So I am a German Gritscher, International Federal Mountain Guide. 56 years old, I'm guiding for the last 20 years as a full-time professional mountain guide. But before I was uh, all the time connected with the mountains. Since I was a kid, you will see on the picture when I was 8 years old, I climbed the Mont Triglo with my father. So now I'm passing the tradition to my kids. So we are always in the mountains all around doing something. In the winter, this is a ski touring because I'm also athlete of Ilan. Ilan is ski producing factory in Slovenia. And in the summer, we are in the Alps. This year we climb the Gran Paradiso. Meantime, spring, autumn, we are climbing, doing rock climbing in Croatia. This picture first is from traversing Volé Blanche, second is the uh, top of Gran Paradiso, then is middle one ice climbing, dry tooling, and the uh, bottom on the right side is from Croatia, from Velebit, climbing in Croatia. And with my wife, whenever we are free, so the mountain guides, we have to train even if we are not working because we have to be in the good shape all the time. This picture is rock climbing above our shitch pass. So whenever we are free, we are doing something outdoors. So what we will cover? Why Slovenia? Because it's very beautiful country. Based actually is uh, lying between the Balkan and uh, Europe in the part of Eastern Europe. And we have really selected hiking gem, really nice pearls of hiking, hidden pearls hiking here in the Julian Alps. And also I have backup plan in the case of bad weather, when sometimes weather is turning really bad and we cannot go into the mountains. As I mentioned before, I am a member of mountain rescue team. So I know because I have experienced more than 30 years as a rescuer. I know when it's time, actually when it's time not to go to the mountains. In that case, we have a back plan. You will see here over the talk about traditional food and accommodation in Slovenia food and drinks and accommodation, a little bit about flora and fauna, winter hiking options, then about the gear, what we are taking with us, and also what we are making for the future, because I have some ideas for the future. So this is uh, Jasna Lake, a nice view from Kranska Gora. From Kranska Gora, over Vršić Pass, over the highest mountain pass, which one you can drive with a car. It's also a start point for many hikes, climbs, walks, whatever you want to do. Or even if you are a tourist and you don't want even to hike, you can also stop in the mountain huts and have a lunch there. So actually this is all my playground, the Julian Alps. And on the other side, if I show you the mountain range, which is covered with the wood, those are caravan calves. And you spot the face in the rock. This is a pagan girl. Walk up to the Sleminovac pizza. That's our first day hike introducing to our hike. And we have really nice mountain lakes. This lake is if we walk the trekking over Triglau 7 lakes. And also kids which take us to the mountains. Alps in Slovenia. Actually, we don't have just Julian Alps, but also we have Kemnik and Caravan Alps. In Slovenia, it's a lot of parks. The main is Triglau National Park, which was established uh, around 100 years ago. And because we have to keep the nature as it is and pass to our children, we have regional and landscape parks. So those parks protect, so you cannot build house there or roads. You just, uh, you can repair what actually already exists. For the Slovenians, outdoor sport is a part of our DNA. So we are all the time outside, doesn't matter if it's this winter, summer, autumn. Also, the weather is not so important. 
So actually we do everything, rafting, mountain biking. This is from last two months ago when I was on the course for the tour bike guide. We took it very serious because this is kind of upgrade for the mountain guides. All we are active outdoors guys. So that was really, really good fun. And we learned a lot also about the mountain biking. So this is Via Ferrata. This is a little bit uh, more difficult than just a hike or walk. And it's uh, good fun for the kids because kids, they don't enjoy in long walks. But if it's some involved, some climbing or this traversing, Tyrolean traverse on the cable, that's more interesting for the kids. And this is all those pictures are from nearby my village is from Ranska Gora. Also, we are camping outdoor, outside in the nature, how to cook. These are from uh, last season, actually, yeah, last season from this year, ice climbing. The middle one is uh, Mera Peak in Himalaya, 6,476 meters. I guided the trekking and the climb on Mera Peak in October. And the right one is the top of Matterhorn, the famous peak in Switzerland. So all those things means I am getting experience, not just from my place, my hometown, Slovenia, but also from all around the world. This makes my mind more open and uh, then you're getting more experience. So the top destinations with the Alpine character in Slovenia, that's more or less on the west, uh, north side of Slovenia. The destinations are Blit, Kranska Gora, Bohin and Socha Valley. In Bohin, I was just watching a documentary film about Agatha Christie. The famous writer Agatha Christie in 50s, she spent the holidays in Slovenia. And she was in the hotel in Bohin. She didn't like interviews, but at that time she gave one of the rare interviews to the Slovenian reporter, actually journalist. At the end of the interview, the journalist asked her if she's writing a new book in Bohin. And she said, no, Bohin is too beautiful place to put the murder in. This is just an anecdote, the short story from the Bohin. And in Bovet, Socha Valley, actually there we are doing trek as well, a day hike. Socha River is protected by UNESCO. So where is Slovenia? Slovenia is based of the eastern part of Europe and just here with those red dots with surrounded countries Italy, Austria, Hungary and Croatia. So here is more detailed map. Austria is north, Italy is west, uh, Croatia is southeast and Hungary is northeast of Slovenia. The capital is Ljubljana. And also to Ljubljana airport is possible to travel and then extend to Kranska Gora, where we are based in the hotel. So from airport Ljubljana to Kranska Gora is around one hour. The ride takes around one hour, depend of the traffic. Also in Austria to the Klagenfurt or Italy to the Venice, Croatia to Zagreb, those airports are around Kranska Gora with 220 kilometers away. So drive takes from the Croatian airport and Venice the same time, two hours and a half to Kranska Gora. And from Austria, from Klagenfurt, one hour and a half. So this is our eight days programs, six guided days. Eight days programs is because first day is arrival and eight day, the last day is departure from Slovenia. On day one, usually people are coming to the hotel during the day or in the evening, depend on the flight. And usually on day one is a meeting with the guide and discuss about the plan, what we will do in next six days of hiking. Day one, we go to Sliminova Spica. That's one of the most beautiful hikes in Slovenia. And what we see on the picture, the mountain uh, with reflection of the lake is Jalovec. That uh, mountain is uh, shaped like a pyramid and it's also in the sign of the Slovenia Alpine Association. So start point is Vršić Pass. It's uh, intro for our hike. 
the tour is not so long and uh, we do the same way, return back to the Varshic Pass. When I was young, I was an alpinist, actually from the mountaineer hiker. When I was uh, the same age as is my son of the picture, I joined the Alpine Club and we did a lot of hikes. But later, when I was 16 years old, I became, I joined the alpinist club and I became an alpinist. So until I didn't get the kids, I was always running, climbing somewhere. And then when we got the kids, I discovered again how beautiful actually the hikes are in the mountains. So that's a view. Sleminova Spitza is the peak here in the middle. Oh, actually more on the right side and the beautiful hikes is going through the wood and up to the top of Sliminovac Pizza. And from there is one of the best views in Julian Alps. So as I mentioned uh, before, the hike is not difficult. Also families with the kids came on this program. But for the families who are coming, I would say the kids around, if they are around 8, 10 years old, they are strong enough to do this hiking program. So this is the summit of Sleminova Spitza and that's the view from the top on the Julian Alps. I know all the names of those uh, mountains. Actually, this is Martulia group. To remember all the names from Riglica, Rushica, Pardamane, Pulice, Špik, Onca, Škrlatica, Rakova Spitza, Roglica, to Prisank, actually to remember all the names. I know you're not going to remember, but to remember all the names is just one recipe when you climb them. When you climb, you will remember the name of the mountain. So on the way back on day one, we will stop the Kocha na Gozdu. My sister is a guardian there for the last 25 years and they have really good local Food. definitely is worth to stop here. Day two. So we are moving to the caravan helps. We are climbing Mont Golitsa. Drive takes from Kranska Gora about one hour and duration actually it's a little bit more than eight hours all day long. End of the May, beginning of June, we can see this flower, Narcius. Actually with uh, those flowers, the mountain is definitely covered totally covered. It's a lot of those flowers. Of course, you have to be there into those two weeks uh, when they are growing and when the blossoms are open. Hike is not difficult, but what is white on the slope, actually, it's they are those alpine flowers. And at the back side, that peak is Triglau, the highest peak in Slovenia and in Julian Alps. So that is the summit. And on the way back, we are stopping in the lunch in another mountain hut, Golitsa hut, where is a similar, really good hospitality and good traditional local food. So day three, they are Martuliak waterfalls. Today, on day three, we are not climbing the top, but it's walk through the Martuliak gorge to see the first Martuliak waterfall. This is the first Martuliak waterfall and then we continue to the Ingo Timbers hut where we can stop for a drink and lunch and then continue our walk over Mahoye. Mahoye is actually one of the sources of Martuliak river and then continue our walk to the second Martuliak waterfall and returning back on the more or less on the same way. On day four, we are going to the caravan calves to Mont uh, Trupejovo Podne peak. That's a nice peak with a cross on the top and I can see also Himalayan prayer flags. Start is uh, from Goz Martuljak, actually Srednivar, and hike takes us over the Alpine meadows with a beautiful view on the Julian Alps. What you see across the Gornjasauska valley, actually they are Julian Alps. That's a Worsca meadow where we continue on the ridge. On the left side of that peak actually is Austria because in Slovenia, Kranska Gora, from where I am, to Austria is 11 kilometers, to Italy is 8 kilometers. So day five, we are going on Socha Trail. 
the drive takes us over Varshich Pass to the source of Socha River. This is quite a long walk. From source of Socha River to Bovitz is more than 24-25 kilometers. Here is written 26, but I think, yeah, when I measured with GPS was 24 kilometers. That's all day walk, but it's mostly down because a little bit is ascent and descent, mostly is down. So that's why it's more kilometers, but it's less difference in altitude. Anyway, if you find out this uh, walk is too long, so we can stop anytime and going uh, with a bus or with a transfer back to Kranska Gora. If you think we can stop in on 15 kilometers, 16, 20, whatever, we can stop and go with a transfer back with a car or van. Anyway, because it's a walk by the Socha River, but not on the road, but on the hiking trail. That's a Socha trout, which is endemic. This kind of fish is trout family, but it uh, lives only in Socha river it's a special and when we will stop for a lunch in the restaurant you can have this kind of fish for lunch those are soshka kurita that's uh, how the water made this gorge through the centuries quite a lot of places to stop to take the photos to see even we swim in socha river when it's during the summer it's uh, not really warm but uh, when it's maybe 15, 16 degrees, it's okay on very, very hot day to refresh. A lot of suspension bridges. And it's also suitable, this trekking, not just for the families with the kids, but also for the older people. Those guys uh, on the pictures are more than 70 years old. And we did the trek as well. Little bit slower, but constantly moving. Socha is also protected by UNESCO, so it's also one of regional parks in Slovenia. Day 6 is walk to the Vrata Valley under the Triglav North Face. It's also all day trip and with the lady on the picture we climbed North Face of Triglav, long German route which is more than 1000 meters long and we did for her 72nd birthday. But uh, Tonka, she's also a guardian of Tonka hut in the mountains and not just fit, but super fit lady for 70, more than 70 years old. First, we will stop at the Perichnik waterfall. The best is actually view in the winter because it's a lot of ice candles. For a lunch, we will stop in Aljazo Dom hut with a nice view on the Triglau North Face. Story about the Triglau. Every Slovenian, if wants to be a proper citizen of Slovenia, should at least one in his life climb a Triglau. So first time I did it with my father when I was eight years old. That's this picture in the middle. But at that time we didn't have a harness, helmet, Boots, they are not as good as now they are these days. I have a woolen jumper and one jacket and um, we did it with uh, my father. This is the last part, 350 meters view from Kredarica hut and the climbs goes up over the ridge to Mali Triglau, which is actually the small Triglau and then follow the ridge and to the summit. But this is via ferrata and some scrambling. It's not difficult if I did it with my kids when they are 5 and 7 years old, so mostly anyone can do it. And I did it with that group of older people as well. Up to the Kredarica hut we almost climbed the Triglau but we turned down because of bad weather. So here we go. If we have bad weather and really heavy rain, strong wind or storm, we cannot go to the high mountains. Even on those hikes, we are not on really, really high, but still we are high enough if it's a storm with a lightning where we supposed not to be. And back up plan is Postojna cave. That's I did it with the group as well. I said, look guys, today we are not going. It's heavy, heavy rain. So let's go to the cave, because in the cave it's not raining. 
and they agreed. The drive takes around two hours in the half. We have to go to the capital and a little bit further to Postoina. And there is a karst cave, which was discovered in the last century. And uh, it's really nice walk. And also the train is running through the cave. In the cave, you will see the human fish. That's a uh, endemic. This kind of animal just live in the underground karst world in uh, Slovenia and part of Italy, very deep. So this animal has no eyes and some short legs for uh, moving. It could be more than 100 years old. In the past, people, they were thinking those animals are baby dragons because when it was heavy rain and flood, sometimes from the cave water brought those animals, but it's the people they were thinking because at that time, 100 years ago, they didn't know so much about animals and the uh, underground world and they were thinking they are baby dragons. Accommodation. This we are based in the small private hotel Primartino Inn, where they have local food and it's also a little bit different than some kind of modern restaurants. So here we can see the room and the guide's corner. I'm not old enough to put the picture on this corner because those are the first mountain guides from Kranska Gora what was actually more than 100 years, maybe 130 years ago from now, when the guiding profession started in Transcagora. Also, you can see a big wooden axe and snowshoes, wooden snowshoes. About the food in Slovenia, we have very famous is Slovenian Carniola sausage. That's a traditional food product. Usually is served with the potatoes and the cabbage. Putica, walnut cake, that's also Slovenian traditional food and it's dish which we served from the Christmas and the Easter. But actually it's a cake we can eat for any celebration. You can use it for a birthday cake. Slovenian cheese dumplings or strukli. We have strukli, they could be made from cheese or they could be filled with the nuts. So anyway, they could be a main dish or dessert. You can eat it after the main dish, but a little bit smaller portion as is on the picture. Also in Slovenia, we have good wine, mostly in the Slovenian cars on the south part of Slovenia, which the wine is uh, similar as is Italy. So Terran, Refors, strong red wine. And in the eastern part of Slovenia, we produce uh, white wine and uh, beer as well. So beer lovers, we are all very happy to drink. In the middle, you can see the glass of Laško. That's a gold horn beer. Union and uh, Laško, they are the most popular Slovenian beers. We have good wildlife. So we can see the road, the red deer, and on those hikes, especially when we are in the caravan calves, if we are very early in the morning, we can see those animals. In Julian Alps, they are alpine ibex and the shamva or gums. Predators, now the wolves are back in Slovenia. In Slovenia also lives between five and 600 brown bears. Five, six, they are in Julian Alps, but mostly all of them, they are living in the eastern part of Slovenia, in Kočevje Wood. Then fox and lynx. Lynx uh, also was brought back from Romania, and now it uh, used to be here, and now is again a small population of lynx here in Slovenia. So the black grouse, alpine dwarf. It's a quite common animal and also we have a few golden eagles and the badger, hedgehog, this I found on the garden. And with the kids, of course, we were, we have a company of uh, marmots. Marmots are also living in Slovenia. That's a climbing site. That's why the marmots are so friendly with, uh, because climbers, they feed them. Alpine plants. We have Carniola lily, Edelweiss on the right side, the middle of the right side. The middle is black vanilla orchid and red vanilla orchid. 
Then is uh, Primula, Saxifraga, the smallest Alpine bell, Spring Gentian, Zoys bell flower is endemic, named by Giga Zoys, a botanic which in, who in the 18th century discovered this plant. And Alpine bells, Triglow rose, Plusis Gentian, and Alpine rose. Forests in Slovenia. It's powered about 85% of the surface of Slovenia is covered with the woods. This put us on the fourth place in Europe, after Finland, Estonia and Latvia. So this is the oldest tree in Slovenia, a large, which is more than 1000 years old. And it's quite big as well. Always you can rest on the trees. We have mushrooms. Those on the left side you can eat many times, on the right side just once. Because it's the poison one, so don't eat those on the right side. The best time what we run through the 57 hours actually for hiking is May till September. Or maybe early in October you can do still some hikes. But then later in November, October, November, or uh, in the winter, so we can do also hikes in the snow. What is also fun, it's a little bit colder, but you can make a snowman. When it's deep snow, we are using a snowshoes. For flat works, we are using this kind of rubber crampons, which they have small spikes, and that's only for the walking on the roads, when the roads, uh, mountain roads are icy. If we want to go to the hike in the highest mountains, we have to use a proper boot crampons, alpine crampons. Here we have it on the picture. Alpine crampons and the ice axe. With ice axe we can stop if we fall. And that's a serious climbing in one 800 meters face in Slovenia. Actually this is alpine ice. It's not ice, but it's a uh, very hard snow. So we can move very fast. About what we have to take with us for a day trip. It's a backpack, around 30 to 40 liters. We need really good shoes. So here are on the picture with the Vibram sole, I would recommend about the ankle. So we can, so it can protect not to twist an ankle. And those things, torch, pen knife, lighter, toilet paper, wet wipes, they are never going out from my backpack. That's always with me. Also, I'm carrying as a mountain rescue radio station. Actually, in Julian Alps, we have really good, it's covered with a phone signal, but just in case if somewhere isn't, I have radio with me. And with the radio, you can easy to connect with a helicopter if in the case if the accident happened. So here is a hat, a buff, headband and the gloves. Maybe not in the summer, these gloves are quite thick, but in the summer I'm taking thin gloves with me. So, backpack 35 liters, first aid kit is uh, in the backpack, but usually the guides we are taking. Walking pole, I'm using one, some people they are using two, sunglasses, then I have onion, so I have a first layer which is usually merino or woolen t-shirt. Then the second layer, light fleece and the wind jacket or Gorotex jacket. And sometimes I'm carrying, depends what the kind of weather is, also down, light down jacket with me. And mountaineering stretch pants. These are two poles for walking, a flask, Gorotex jacket. This is a little bit too big because it's mine. And if you have all the gear, so you will enjoy on the trip. Otherwise you're suffering. If you don't have a proper hiking boots, if you don't have enough clothes, uh, when was a COVID, a lot of people went, discovered they can go to the mountains. But if you are not experienced, if you are not well prepared for the trip, it's much better to hire a guide than to be rescued from the mountain. So this is the platform, 57 hours and our program. So on the 57 hours, you will find the program on this, like it's uh, sharing on the screen. And what's coming next? I passed the license for the tour bike guide. And now we are thinking 
and act green as well. To go instead to with a car, so now we are going with the bikes or with the e-bikes to the mountains, park the bikes and do the hike. This is the future. I'm still working on the program, but I think for 2024, I will uh, guide bike and hike tours as well. So now this is it. I would like to say thank you very much to joining me. Now I'm looking forward to see you here in Slovenia. Okay, thank you so much. And bye.